So I did six takes of this because I kind of suck. And I trigger the samples in trigger two. I cheat. What are you gonna do? YouTube, Jeff Bosco here. So I finished tracking my um, Nobody's Fault But Mine drum cover. Uh, la, 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 la. And I promised to do a video on my entire process. So might as well get into it. First thing I want to do is edit. And I took most of my processing off that uh, kind of had like a scratch scratch mix going but uh, i'll show you show you guys everything from start to finish so i took everything off for the most part just very basic things on there now uh so i did six takes of this because i kind of suck <laughs> surprising uh some of you might be surprised but the other people who uh may not be so surprised hey be nice. I think for the most part, I am going to just use the last two takes. I think uh, that's all I'll need and that should work just fine. So I'm going to go through take five and six and uh, switch between them as I need to. I've had a rough mix of just take five playing in my car and there's only a few spots that are intolerably bad all right let's uh let's start listening <laughs> that was a little wonky so let's uh let's uh la 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 i don't need these so just go till that and um Highlight all these. Okay, they're already highlighted. And then hit. This is track, or this is take five. So I want to go to take six. So I'm just going to hit the T. And there we go. Okay, I guess um, take five is going to have to do there. And I'm just going to leave that there like that for now. That's fine. Uh, and then I'll just align everything align that better after I'm done with the the basic edit that one's pretty good That was pretty good. Let's hear what's, you know, let's hear what I did on track six. Okay, so all of track f uh, take five here is better, but I think I like something that happens in this this bar here. No, wasn't that one. I like I like this all the way up until this fill here. So let's uh, listen to that. And track three, shift T. Let's uh to S T and then S again and then back to T. Nope. 
There we go. Let's, uh, let's go between those. Whoops. Yeah, I like that. I like that one bar in there. Uh, I guess it's one and a half bars. I'm not crazy about the way I ended this here. Uh, yeah, actually, let me let me grab uh, Bonzo's uh, drat, drum track and drag that over here. That'll give me a better idea of exactly why it sounds wrong. Yeah, it's a little, definitely a little late. All right, that's not a huge deal. And I'll, uh, I have the mass, the regular uh, performance, and let's just listen to that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm too late. That's what it is. Too late with that snare hit, but that's okay. Uh, da, da, da. Those don't need to be there. That's an inconvenient spot for them to be. All right. Uh, yeah. So I'm not going to fix that now. That's a little late. That's all right. That can stay like that. But let's just for schnitz and schniggles. Gotta stop stealing. <laughs> gotta stop stealing Warren's Warren shtick. It's kind of hard though. It's so it's it's a good shtick. He's got good shtick. Ah, what did I get? Okay, that's right. Schnikes. All right, where did I go? There we go. Okay, I gotta re. I should have these grouped together. Yeah, that was a little that was a little wonky there. That's all right. Like I said, I kind of suck. Let's uh Let's hear, let's go back to, nope. Okay, so, yeah, I think I'm gonna go back to take six on that. We'll uh, just go back to I'm missing something there, but uh, I'm not going to go back and redo it just for that. That's not, that's fine. I didn't like that. Let's, uh, let's go to, what is it, track six? Yeah. That one wasn't much better. Um, they're about equal. Uh, I think I'm going to leave this one and just fix it. Because, again, I suck. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I should stop saying that. A, a little self-deprecation is 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 good. You don't have to. Uh, at some point, you're just sounding narcissistic. Whoops! That was way early. 
A lot of these are early. Whoops. Okay, so I guess I have to... Uh... All right, I'll just move that one. That's not a big deal. At least it's there, unlike some of the other ones. Nope, I know the, uh, I know, tra uh, I know take five is much better here. Uh, it isn't much better. Let's go. That was before I started adding in the kick. Yeah, they're out of sync. Okay, I can just... I'll just fix that one. That one's good. That's good. That's a little wonky. Let's see if there's a better one. That one's much better, yeah. <laughs> oh, I made it all the way to there before f***ing that one up. Excuse me. I made it all the way to there without messing that one up. Yeah. Wow. I, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to have uh, a solid take of that. That's good enough. I'll f I mean, yeah, I'm obviously I'm going to fix it because it's not perfect, but um, uh, let's uh, see. Take six. <laughs> They're both wonky in their own unique ways. All right, let's go back to take five. Yeah, you see that? Uh, here, let's... Uh... Doop, 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 doop. <laughs> yep. Messy Jeffrey. Uh, yeah, I think I can go with take six on that. Yeah, I think that one's better. Good, yeah, that was, I mean, it obviously wasn't great, but that was uh, as good as I could have expected with the amount of time I've actually put into practicing this, which was not much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say here, yeah, I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you that I do not consider my channel a drum channel. This is a music production channel with a focus on drums. So we'll just, uh, well, I'll focus on drums for now, but um, I plan on expanding more into doing other things like my um, uh, Yellow Dirt cover. If you haven't seen that, I'm going to put that in, you know, put it right here somewhere but yeah go check that out I did everything myself um, I plan on trying to get more people together and help me put more stuff together like that where I uh, go in and just um, kind of rearrange the songs and do, doing things that amuse me um, like I added cello and made it kind of progressive to a um, folk rock tune by um, Seals and Crofts, uh, uh, yeah, just stuff like that. 
But um, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Oh, that's not good. That wasn't good. Let's go to track five. Yes. Did I play that lick right? It's possible I did not. Let's, uh... What's up with my... Eh. Good enough. Said Mediocrates. Oh, of course. Yeah, that needs, uh, that needs a better take. Hopefully, hopefully take six will come through there. Nope. <laughs> okay. Whoops! All right, come on, take six. S. Yeah, okay. Whoops. Come on, there we go. All right, let's... Uh... Good. That was pretty garbage there. Let's get rid of that. Go back and take fun. That was weird. But I kind of like it. All right, let's uh, see what happens. Yeah. Let's, uh, since that snare hit is late, AF. that fill everything else was good enough whoops nope Wrong. Maybe I have to use uh, take four. Nope. All right. Whoops.
Nope. That's garbage. What's wrong with you? Nope. Yeah, I guess that's going to have to do. S, and then go back to... That was garbage. What's, uh... Oh, okay. There's a snare hit there, that's what. Whoops! Uh, let me see. All right, so let's, um, since I didn't, is there a snare hit there? Yeah, there is in the real track. That's all right. Didn't I? I thought I, <laughs> I could have sworn I remembered to always remember to hit the uh, the 18 inch crash there. Those all sounded like the 16. Hmm. So come on, control Z. Oh, it's because I was hitting shift Z. Psst, dumbass. That's, uh, that is definitely a little wonky. Let's see how much better I did on take six. That's better. I'll just fix it. That's, um... Those two are good. Let's switch back to what? Hmm. There's a lot of stuff in there that's not so bueno. That I can tell right now that sucks. <laughs> yep. I don't remember what I was thinking there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think I'm just going to go back to five. Yeah, I'll just realign that. Nope. Nope. Yeah, that was good. 
That was good. Nice. Not bad, not bad. No. All right, let's, uh, it's like right here. Got to go back to. Woo. Nope. All right, let's, uh, let's, f no, f I, c I don't know what I was doing that for. I guess five is going to have to do. Nope. Nope. All right, five is going to have to do there too. Not good. Oof. This sounded a lot better. Oh, you know what? That was more, it was more mixed. The version I've been listening to is a lot more mixed. That's why. I'm just gonna leave it. I like that one. That was that was pretty good. Whoops. enough whoops now please tell me take five was better good yep no nope. good whoops nope good nope <laughs> yes. Nope. Yes. Nope. If I'm looking at take five of this, hopefully. Good. Yeah. <laughs> five, six, five, six. That's funny. Nice. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't think I, uh, I don't think I got a good shot at this, this one, because it's different than the first time around. Ah. Uh, yeah. Let me, uh.
All right, I'll figure out a way to fix it. Let's see. I know for a fact five was better on that. Let's see. Oops. Yeah, I like six better there. Whoops. Whoops. Yeah. Yeah, I like that the uh I'll just move it. I'm a little early there. Just a tad. That's right. That's right. Um so let's uh okay, so I did almost uh all four and uh, five and six. Except for uh, that one little slice of, what was that, three there? All right, I'm going to listen to that. Give that a listen through. And uh, you don't need to see that. Just going to pause. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so I uh, gave this a final uh, kind of... Uh, okay and uh i'm satisfied with how it is and uh i decided i'm not really gonna try and fix much of anything except for this Whoop. is that it yeah I wonder. I wonder if this will do the trick. enough.
Yeah. The rest of it is, yeah. The rest of it doesn't really um, bother me at all. So, I'm just going to... Uh... Yeah, it's fine. All right, let's... Um... All right, uh, so let's get down to mixing. All right, so let me uh, show you what I got here. Um, I have a kick in and kick out, and I'll show you pictures. I'll overlay some pictures of what I got for the, each mic. And uh, there's a kick out. You can see that's an Octava MK... Uh, I don't remember what model it is. Just a large diaphragm Octava mic. One of the cheaper ones. And that's the key to the bottom sound is having a, some kind of large diaphragm condenser out in front a couple feet, you know, like you can see it in the picture. I also did a kick in. I don't know how much I'll end up using it, but I did it anyway, because, um, you know, normally everybody does a full on uh, head. Um, I already put a hole in that one and it sounds fine. And that's the thing with um, uh, going after drum sounds, you know, you see a lot of the, the big channels, they do their thing and they get a little too literalistic with the, the actual kit. Those things do matter. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I think the mainly the tuning and the mic placement and the mixing are all more important than the actual drums you're using. Oh, and the, and the space you're in. The space you're recording in, the tuning, and the uh, processing are much more important than stuff like the actual heads or the, uh, the kit you're using and the sizes. Um, you know, I mentioned in, in the, the previous video of the uh, piezo test that uh, that 22 by 14 sonophonic is huge. Um, you probably can't get that. You're probably not going to get that sound with a, um, a modern 22 by 18 kick drum. I've tried a, a long time to get that sound and uh, uh, I couldn't get anywhere close until I got that kick. But yeah, as far as that goes, that's probably, uh, you're going to have to find the right kick for this. Uh, at least find a, uh, some kind of vintage 22 by 14, but you're probably going to want to, if you want to go for the bottom sound, unless you're willing to go find a old sonar phonic, you're probably going to want to find something that's 24 by 14 at least. All right. So here's the kick in. And you can see where that is. That's a AKG G. That's an AKG D112. Sounds very thwappy. I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. Uh, okay, let's go to the overheads. Do a um, mono test. Yeah, they sum to mono pretty good. You know what? I'm going to uh, take these down to 80% width and just pull them in a little bit because. Uh, And this is a, um, these are a, um, if you can see from the, the shot, uh, this is kind of like a recorder man kind of setup. 
uh, one over my shoulder and one looking straight down at the snare drum. Those are uh, the Lewitt uh, LCT. They're the small, small diaphragm contents. I'll, I'll say what it is on a title over there. Here, let's get rid of everything else. Uh, don't worry about the uh, the close mics yet. I'll get to that. Yes. All right, and this is a um, Lewitt LCT 441 Flex for the over uh, overhead mono. And you can see that where it is really in relation to the overheads. It's kind of over these, uh, this, the, um, the, over the ride symbol, getting more of that side of the kit. I don't really have a complete, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Rationale for that. It's just where I put it. And it uh, ended up sounding good. Oh, and that's also in om the Omni position. So it's the uh, mono overhead Omni. That's it in context. Okay. And here is the piezo room. I should have um, I should have done a little more experimenting with the new setup because I actually did go out and buy a ten dollar uh, replacement um, piezo pickup for a, an acoustic guitar, like the one you would install into uh, um, an, an acoustic guitar, and then went out of there into a direct box. It's um. It's definitely superior to the um, the bare piezo element I was using, but I'm not crazy about the. Um, there's some resonant frequencies, but uh, I don't hate it either, so it's good enough. Uh... It still adds that nice air to the sound and um, I, a lot. The cymbal rejection is much better. So I was really happy with that. All right, so that's the basic um, tracking setup for the live mics. Okay, so the, the uh, close mics. I'll just say right now, if you could see there, see on the, um, there's trigger two. I, sa I sample my kit and I trigger them, trigger the samples in trigger two. I cheat. What are you going to do? Uh, I'm not sure how much I'm going to end up using of that in the total mix, but I'll add those as we go along and we'll I'll make those decisions later so now I'm just I got the Tom bus and the two snares uh, muted I do um, I do two snare uh, I have the um, double um, it's a two zone rolling snare trigger so I, I have to, um, the main one is the, the snare and the, the secondary is the rim. So that's how that works. And I just trigger different sounds through each of them. I don't know. I don't know why I do it that way. I could just trigger them both from the same source, but eh, it's just the way I've been doing it.
There's my snare sample, but we're not gonna worry about that for now. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is uh, go to the kick out and add Rhea comp because we are going to do a side chain with the snare and the Tom Toms new send go to I'm going to do kick out I'm going to go to kick in too because I'm going to eventually do that with the kick in as well okay and four tracks snare one go to three four okay Attack and release times. I usually do a little pre comp. That doesn't need to be that much. You don't you don't need to go crazy with this. Three to five dB is plenty. And then I'm going to add drum leveler, leveler after this. Um, targets, I think I'm going to And uh, if anybody has a better ideas of better settings for this, that would be fine with me. All right, so what I just did there is um, I uh, compressed the snare in the snare bleed and the kick out mic. And then I expanded the uh, the kick hits with drum leveler. So I did the opposite of compressing them. So you get a better ratio of snare, hit, uh, kick drum hits to snare hits. So I just made the uh, the bass drum hits a little bit louder than the snare drum hits, and that lets the the other the snare drum in the other uh, mics come out more fully and not have the because the uh, if you just listen how flat the. Uh, the snare sounds in that. You don't want that 
mixing in with the rest of the mics. Here, let me turn it off. Hear what happens to the snare? Okay, that's the first thing. Uh, I'm not going to go crazy with the, uh, the processing on that just yet. I just wanted to get that much done. Next thing I'm going to do is work on the overheads. Um, what do I want to do first? Yeah, I'll do drum leveler first. And all I want to do with drum leveler is just take down the snare drums, some of the, the harder snare drum hits. Just even them out just a little bit. I think I'll go even. Let's uh, let's see where the limit of this is. That's too much. That's good. I like that. Um, what next? Then I'll put a let's find where is a pre clip. That's what I was like. Go into Clipper. It's really hard to see those. Just to clip off a tiny bit of the, the initial transient. That's the one thing about, um, uh, mixing drums that I learned recently, you probably have way more transients than you need, and it's okay to kind of pack them in a little bit more than you think. But it's it's a matter of doing it in stages. So the first stage was drum leveler, which is a very uh, transparent um, way of leveling out all the hits. And then the free clip just uh, brings them in, tucks them in a little more. And then next, next, yeah, I usually do uh, SSL. No, I, that's how I used to do it. I forgot the next one. It's not this one. Um, so I'm going to pull up uh, Tokyo Dawn Labs Nova. And then I'm going to take a bunch out. And this is the other big thing that I learned. You probably have way more mid 
to mid low low mid frequencies in here than you need. And uh, I'm going to take the high pass filter and go up to probably one honey. Then I think I will add this for the um, compressor. Right. Uh, uh, eventually, I will add some uh, limiting to that, uh, but for now, that's good. Um, I'm going to go to this. I'm going to go to the piezo first. No, I don't need drum leveler on that. Uh, what am I going to start with here? I think I'm going to start with um, probably Nova. Yeah. Let's get a high pass filter in there. Get rid of that uh, seven, six to one K. I'm gonna take. Pass filter in. That's good.
Okay, I have a feeling because I'm mixing on headphones, I'm taking this stuff way too far. I mean, I'm gonna go go back and check this all on this the monitors before I set anything in stone. So uh, this is just my basic process. Um, what do I want to do next? Oh, right. Yeah, you should go to free clips. <laughs> Then I'll go get um, code red, mono, yeah. It's really hard to tell. Yeah, let me uh, let me find that. Let's see. Oh, okay. It's much easier to tell the phase of this. All right. So yeah, no, that could. Uh... And I'm gonna end up uh, doing the overhead mono very similarly so i'll just copy those over to that Yeah, I got to check this on the monitor, so I will be right back. Burk. Burk, burk. Now I'll just do it here, and you'll just have to deal with the crappy sound. And let's turn that down. <laughs> I forgot something. I meant to do this earlier. Um, I'll be, no, I'll, I'll show you in a minute.
Okay, I'm pretty happy with that so far. I'm going to turn the monitors back off. Give myself a little more, a little more juice in the cans. Uh, definitely want to uh, get in here and take out some low mids. So I'll grab the Nova. I don't want to go too crazy with the um, compression on anything yet. All right, so at this point, I'm going to duplicate the drum bus. Uh, I'm going to send that to the drum bus. And this will become my crush bus. Uh, kick, kick bus, I'll take that out. Uh, snare, take everything down for now, except for the, uh, room mics. Definitely want the piezo room most. And then we'll take this and add code red. Add, there we go. Put that after free clip. Yeah, yeah, that's what that works. Now we're getting there. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'll add the, uh, the reverb now. Okay, yeah, that's right. That looks good. Uh, so receive. Let's uh, let's get piezo.
Ouais. Just uh, check that out in the monitors. Chopper is looking for attention. Come here, Chopper. There he is. There's the miracle kitty. Hi. Can you purr for the camera? <laughs> There's a chopper. This is Chopper, everyone. If you haven't seen my video on his story, go check that out. He just wants some loving. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, I think I'm just gonna leave it like that for now and I'll come back to this. I'm gonna give Chopper some loving and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Gonna continue going on. Ah, uh, la 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 la. Okay, so what else am I doing? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, um, I don't start off with a lot of um, bus processing. Uh, oh, I still had all this stuff. I didn't realize that. Well, that certainly changes things, doesn't it? I didn't mean to leave that stuff on. I had it on from a previous, you know, little experiment uh, test, uh, sound test that I did before.
Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is um, one of the things that took me a long time to really figure out is um, um, you notice how much uh, how much mids I'm taking out of here. You know, I always took out some, but um, the thing I realized is like you're probably not taking out enough. And uh, that's where a lot of the muddiness and the and the drums tends to come from. But actually. I actually think I did take too much out there. Let me get rid of this. Now I'm just trying to get like the, the snare to sound right. <laughs> uh, getting, trying to get the right proportions. And like I said, this is a uh, sample. way too much.
Okay, let's start working on this um, snare sample. Uh, let's go to Nova. There we go.
What the heck is going on here? Like, I, yeah, these are these are samples too, but um, I'm not even sure I'm gonna use any close sources. hear that in the monitors like you're gonna stop me from the other side of your computer let me
Um, this shouldn't go to the the bus. This should go to the drum bus. I think I'm, I think I'm liking this. I'm, I'm not going to use the worst mic. Um, it's just adding a lot of snare, and I'm, I'm getting in more snare than I need in the overhead, so... It's not really the present drum sound, but it's definitely a type of bottom sound. So I'm happy. change my mind I am going to add some Tom samples but they won't be close they won't be close samples this is one of my secret sauce samples I might as well use it um what is this Tom one that's 16 
Okay, got these muted. Yeah. Okay. funky going on there. What's that? What's going on there? What's going on with you? Triggering. Woo! Just a little, uh...
Okay. All right, let me just show you what I got on my uh, drum bus here. I just got a little bit of drum leveler. And that's just cutting down just the, the highest peaks just a tiny bit. Um, then I'm going into some uh, free clip. There's a lot of snare. Let me, uh, let's just, let's just take this down a little more. I got some uh, Tokyo Don's Lab, Kotelnikov. <music> Slow attack, fast release, typical what you see on uh, any kind of drum, drum uh, compression. <music> then in. Then to this fabulous uh, plug-in, the L1 limiter. I am 
I'm satisfied. So, yeah, so the, the key to this sound is the large diaphragm condenser, you know, foot and a half in front of the drum, the bass, the kick drum off to the side. That's that's the big thing. That's in, in getting the right kick, the right uh, physical kick drum uh, that can produce that kind of uh, open sound. Um, that mixed with the, um, you know, Glenn Johns recorder man spectrum uh, overhead set up with some kind of um, big room mic. So however you want to do that, the way I did it, it was with the piezo tape to the wall. Um, I should have spent more time experimenting. I wasn't crazy about the way it sounded, but it still added that air and it had enough um, uh, separation between the drums and the cymbals that you could just basically crush it. And that's how, how to get, get that bigger sound and the um the thing about um bigger rooms is um you don't have to worry about too much separation between the the drums and the the cymbals because the cymbals in a bigger room have a lot of space to just like dissipate into but when you're in a smaller room it's so much more important to get the cymbals and the drums uh separated so because you st- the symbols are going, psh, psh. you can hear it in there. When, when I switch between the original track and my, my take, um, you can hear like the, the symbols, even just, even just in the overheads, you know, you, you're still having to, to fight that. So it, when you go to, you know, really clamp down on, a, um, a room mic, and the symbols are just doing all that. I mean, it's it just turns into a bunch of mess. But if you could get like the a nice um, uh, separated sound, you could crush the heck out of it, and it's gonna sound like a big room. crushed oh I took these off that's right whoop Yeah, so that's that's really the key to getting the sound. I mean, you want you want the t- drums tuned well too. So you're, um, I'm not gonna really get too much into that. So yeah, with the um, the 22 by 14, I basically did the normal thing you do. You tune it until just all the wrinkles come out on each side, and um, that's pretty much it. Um, the Tom Toms are tuned pretty high, as John Bonham would have them, um, but completely open. Same thing with the snare. I mean, uh, I'm actually surprised because uh, I always figured um, Bonham's uh, snare drum was tuned lower than it actually is. And when I started digging into it, it's uh, I actually tuned tuned up my snare for this this take here uh, more than I would have thought. I should, but um, yeah, no, it ended up working. But yeah, that's about it. So I'm not going to do any kind of editing. I'm just going to throw all everything I have into um, one video and uh, instead of, you know, 
trying to figure out be fancy and just i'm just going to get this out there uh, for everyone so yeah if you kept uh, going all the way up until the end congratulations uh like comment and subscribe